We've done Inazuma 11 1. We've done Inazuma 11 2. So now it's time for Inazuma 11 3. And we're going to take a look at it. We're going to rank every story player from worst to best. We're teaming up with Zikri AK again. And with his brains and my good looks, we're bringing you a list that will hopefully help you the next time you play these games. So, let's get some quick rules out of the way. One, there's no Cannon Evans, because you get him so late on, there is literally no point. Two, this is for a casual player who is going up until Ogre Redux. Three, on screen you will see goalkeeper, defender, midfielder, forward, and a number after that. That is basically to say how good this player is in that position. And they're rated from one to five. One means absolutely terrible, do not use them there. Five means yes, hell yes, everything about this yes. And finally, just a general note that every single player on this list is absolutely viable and 100% can be used. In Azuma 11 3 is the easiest game in the series, so you're not really going to struggle either way. But let's go. There are a lot of these, so we may fly through them. But number 19 is Scotty Banyan. For some reason, his 44 TP whirlwind force just wipes out his all of his TP for basically the entire story mode. He also gets Gale Dash level 22, but again, his TP sucks and it's a pretty high TP move. He gets Harvest level 42, which is pretty good and makes him a bit better as he slowly gets more TP. But by then, he's probably off of your team, so there's not really any point to have him on. Jordan Greenway is bang average. Sorry for all of his stands, but he's just a pretty all right player, all things considered. Doesn't really have any amazing moves. Doesn't really have any underwhelming moves. If you got a block move, you'd be rated a bit higher, but as he is, eh. Xavier cannot use Meteor Blade more than once without firing up until level 47. And he is the slowest level up rate in the game. However, he does get Photon Crash, which is a really good move. And so basically, he's a better defender than he is forward for the majority of the story. At level 47, he does become a really good forward with Celestial Smash and the Dawn. But for most of the story, he's just kind of eh. Archer Hawkins is obviously useless for the start of the game, up until he gets back attack, um, which is really good then for the majority of the story. And then he falls off again because the only thing he gets is Vac Attack. His Never Give Up skill can be useful, but it weakens your team when you're winning a match. And IE3 is one of the easiest games in the series. So odds are you're generally going to be winning a match. So yeah, all in all, he's not that useful. I still love him though. Unfortunately, Nathan doesn't have Quick Draw or Clone Defense. Instead, he is the incredibly expensive Wins God's Dance. He's a lot better for battles rather than matches where he can just use Win God Dance once and then uses decent decent shot, and then boom. Because otherwise, you're just going to kind of click it once and then never be able to do anything ever again. When he joins, Kevin Dragonfly is a really good forward. However, he does fall off in the post game. He's good, but not that good. Caleb Stonewall, you literally cannot use for the start of the story, so it feels a bit awkward ranking him. And when he gets Field of Force, that's literally all he can do. He does get Necro Penguin number three, which is pretty solid for the post-game teams. And Field of Force wins basically all of the time. So it does kind of balance out, but I'm not going to rank him that high. Jude Sharp's all right in the beginning of the game with Illusion Ball and Twin Boost, which are pretty cheap and so pretty all right to use. But when he gets Emperor Penguin number three, he becomes a really, really good forward option. And he also gets Field of Force level 50, which just makes him even better going forward. Unfortunately, though, he just gets all of the stuff a bit too late. Austin Hobbs is incredibly well balanced. He's got double touch if you need it. Tiger Drive, which is a cheap shot and a pretty decent one. And then he gets Tiger Storm and Gladius Arch, which are both really good moves. Unfortunately, though, he does fall off a bit in the post game. Shout out to Todd for making the top 10. This man is absolutely insane. He has a really good move set for the late game because of defense plus, a good block, and the dribble with a cheap long shot, which is just a pretty decent bloody move set. However, his main problem is that during the story, he's essentially another Scotty Banyan because he's got that really low TP. Comet shot is good on enemy goalkeepers who run out of TP though. Ah, you didn't see this one coming, did you? Did you remember that you get Durham in this game as a mandatory scout? Yeah, so Durham you get early on and he gets Bewilder Blast straight away, which is great. However, his TP does kind of suck but everyone else also does, so you know what I mean, like equality. He gets Desert Blast at level 35, and when he gets that, he becomes amazing. He also gets Tripegasus at level 52, which is also really, really good. He is an all-rounder in every sense of the word. David Sanford is Offense Force, which is a really good support skill. And he is Gale Dash, which is a really good move. And Ever Penguin number two, which is also a really good move. Unfortunately, though, that's basically all he gets. He does eventually get Space Penguin, 
but it's way too late. He is a better Jordan. Early game, Darren Chance is so much better than Mark Evans because of his stab 50 TP Mug in the hand. However, as the game progresses and you get to the late game, he falls off completely because he has a slow level up rate, so his stats grow really slowly. Fiend hand's cool though. Jack Wallside gets the wall and mole fake pretty much out of the gate. And he gets Stonewall at level 23. And he gets the Mountain at level 35, which is when he becomes a defensive powerhouse. Overall, he's really balanced, and he's a decent pick for the overall meta of the game because of his shot block. Axel Blaze is Axel Blaze. He's a striker who can do nothing else. He's got Grand Fire, so he'll basically always score, but then he can only really use Grand Fire once, so... Eh. Fun fact, if you train him up to level 99 and max out his TP, he can still only use Grand Fire once. Very depressing. Mark Evans is Mark Evans. He's a really solid goalkeeper. The post-game teams can kind of destroy him, but for the entire story, he is as good as you're gonna get. Shout out to the most forgettable character in the team, Thor Stoutberg. He's basically Jack in the early game, but even stronger because of big moves. And then when chapter four rolls around, he gets Thunder Beast, which makes him a really powerful forward. And he has a ton of TP, and he also has big moves. Did I mention he has big moves? Hurley Kane is a better Archer Hawkins. I'm gonna go cry myself to sleep now. He has the skill everyone move it, which is a brilliant skill for the story. He gets a stronger block move and really versatile shooting with Tsunami Boost and the Typhoon. And finally, the best player in the story is Sean Frost. He's a great forward in the story, but we'd advise to switch him to a midfielder for the post game as Legendary Wolf does slightly fall off, but he has an amazing move in every position, which is just absolutely fantastic. He is the definition of a brilliant all-rounder, a jack of all trades, if you will. But hopefully you enjoyed that video and let me know if you disagree with our rankings. But for now, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that juicy stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.